Begin installation of your car turner. Clean the area of any dust and or debris. Beginning with the spokes, position them around so the tips where the nut and bolt are, are flush with each other. Here, I'm positioning the spokes flush with each other in order for the bolts to align with the holes of the white piece of the center bearing, making sure the pieces are flat as well. Place the white piece of the center bearing over the bolts and fasten with the lock nuts provided. This may require a small amount of persuasion. Using a 7 16 T-handle or socket wrench, fasten the lock nuts to be snug. Over tightening can result in bolt breakage. Here, I'm showing how the twisting of the white piece will align the spokes in proper position. After the spokes and center bearing are fastened, begin with the innermost track. You will see that the tabs fit precisely in the eyelets. When you're finished with the innermost track, load up the outer track in the same fashion as before. Moving to the outermost ring, start with a motor round and connect to a non-motor round. You will notice that these pieces fit together like puzzle pieces. Then connect to the spoke and repeat around the diameter of the circle. At Car Turner, we call the undercarriage of the table the spider. And this is what it should look like when you have everything in place. With everything in place, fastened by hammering down the tabs away from center. This is me showing what away from center means. This tab is considered bent away because this is a track on which a wheel rolls. If the tab is bent inward, the wheel will be forced to roll over it. With everything securely fastened and together, you can now twist or move the spider to your desired position by sliding it around. This will not be easy, so start assembly relatively close to your desired position. Here, I'm explaining where to anchor the spider to the floor. There is to be one anchor in every spoke between the tracks. Using a steel bit and a mason bit, bore holes deep enough to accept, at the very least, a one inch blue mason screw. Also, place an anchor behind every motor, one inch directly behind the welded nut. It is extremely important to anchor the machine to the floor. A non-anchored machine can actually move over time, walking away from its original position. This can cause damage to the machine, the spinning car, and or any property in its course. 
Also, it is Car Turner policy that any machine not properly anchored will result in the void of your purchased warranty. With the spider properly anchored, load up three pie panels. The first is braced up against a motor's drive wheel at center, and then one pie panel on each side of it. On the center bearing, you will notice two hole patterns. Using a Z-bar for leverage and a quarter inch T-handle Allen key, fasten the shoulder bolts on the tighter hole pattern. Make sure the washers welded to the panel act as a sleeve for the shoulder bolt and is not pinned down by it. This allows the individual panels to travel up and down as it spins over the topography of the subfloor. Load up two more panels and fasten with the shoulder bolts. panels are not aligning, you can place a shoulder bolt on the opposite side of the panels. Using your Z-bar as leverage, you can align to either side. As you can see, the tips of these panels are perfectly aligned. Load up two more panels and fasten with the shoulder bolts, and then two more for a total of nine, leaving the last final panel out. The wire harness is a split wire harness, meaning with six motors, your power will come in with three motors to the right and three motors to the left. The power comes in in the middle of your desired motor round. With the power connected and remote in hand, brace your feet on each panel between the final panel slot and turn on. Be careful because there will be a slight jolt. Turn around a few times and inspect the spider for dropped bolts, debris, or unfolded tabs. This also settles the bolted panels in place and allows optimal room for the final pie panel. Putting in the final panel requires some persuasion with your Z-bar. Pry using the welded nuts. Place the top plate over the holes and fasten with the provided body panel clips. Put the clips in the holes and push the button to secure. In order to release the clip, just push all the way through to disengage. So here's the difference between a motor ramp and a non-motor ramp. The non-motor ramp has support ribs as to where the motor ramp has a cavity and a window for the drive wheel. Now we're ready to put the ramps down. Starting point is uh, one, one ramp to the left of the first motor in the wire harness, between where there is harness and no harness. There, should be, there will be a section where there is no harness. That is where you want to start and you move counterclockwise. Have this cleat and the other ramp receives it. That's how you'll want it. And you'll also notice that this edge catches right here. So when you line up, when you line up the hole, it stops. And you have a nice reveal. It's important to make sure that your harness is routed properly, so you want to stick your head under there so you can see that it's routed properly.
And basically all you're doing is making sure that the ramp doesn't pinch the wire and goes down smooth, just like that. Now you can begin with the bolts. Sometimes your bolt holes won't line up. In fact, most of them will not. But no matter, all you gotta do is kinda give it a nice little kick into place. And I do them by hand because if you do it with a drill, you can cross thread them. And just snug is fine, not tight. And then you got your cleats here. You receive it here. Throw it, engage those, and take your harness and pull it tight. This will make sure it's fed through the slot correctly. And then it goes down. Okay, so in your bolt kit comes these small uh, zip ties. These are for these eyelets around this spring housing and it's, and it's to make sure that your wire harness is in the right spot. Because if it's in the wrong spot, you could pinch a wire. It could result in a short, which could result in it not working. Make sure that's fairly tight. Make sure that's fed underneath your ramp properly so you don't have a pinch. So now show me these, these picks here. So this harness right here is going to follow this groove. You want to make sure that it follows that groove and doesn't get pinched anywhere along the line. It's very, very important that this does not get pinched. So you'll put it down on a cleat and then you'll poke your head under. Just kind of feed it. You can see where it needs to go with your hand. 